only 19 years of age. Oh my goodness, this is uh, a youngster against a seasoned veteran. Always kind of an interesting matchup when you get two players with those varied backgrounds. Yes, it is. However, Wendy Danny is an experienced TV bowler. Her first time on television was in the U.S. Open a year ago, and she won five consecutive matches to win that, as she was only 18 at the time. Yeah, you know what they say, inexperience, you know, it's tough to go out there and win. She proved them wrong there. Betty Morris with two straight victories over Diana Davenport and Cass Leal looking for win number three. We're in the opening stages of game number three, the semifinal game. And a nine pin just kind of stands there amidst all the other pins swirling around on lane 17. So Betty will have to open up with a spare. How about the eight pin? <laughs> oh, excuse me. Yeah, let's make it the eight pin. Make it the eight pin. However, she did think that that might have carried. She was hoping for it. Mm-hmm. Five on the deck there. Averaging 211.5 thus far today. If you take a look back at what she averaged on the television pair throughout the week, it was 192.5. So Betty obviously uh, gearing up here for the championship round. Out of San Diego, California, Wendy McPherson. Anybody who wins the U.S. Open can play. <laughs> Well, Wendy won it as an amateur, too, Danny, and she was only the second amateur to ever do that, uh, behind Lori Nichols. Boy, great floor shot there. Take a look at how short they're setting the balls here this afternoon. That one skids for a while and leaves the bucket on the opening shot. Not exactly what you hope for. No, she's definitely going to have to convert this here to keep any type of pressure on Betty. We're talking about how short Wendy set that ball. Both players, Betty and Wendy, are setting the ball fairly short to get the ball into a roll early. If they don't do that, the ball has a tendency to slide, and then once again, not getting the hook or the reaction that they'd like to see. Now, when we're talking about longer oil this week, Leah, are we talking about 40 feet or 35 feet, or basically what are we talking about? Well, they oiled the lines this week, 25 feet, however, they buffed it down to 40 feet, mm -hmm. and they put quite a bit on the head of the, the forward part of the lane. Mm -hmm. Second year? Obviously one title, 14 and 10, and uh, her roommate... Karen Ellingsworth is the top seed player, so uh, if she makes it to the championship round, that could be an interesting match. That sure could. As a matter of fact, their other roommate, Anne-Marie Pike, was on the show last week. That's right. Anne Marie they... mm -hmm. came very close to making the telecast here, had a run at it last night. That would have been something. All three living in the same room and all bowling in the championship finals. Good shot on the left-hand lane and a solid 10. I don't think as roommates you could be any more happy than that to have all, all well, the roommates on the show. Probably the hardest thing in the world to do is to travel out here when one roommate is bowling well and the other one can't seem to get it going. You, you kind of have to take work home with you because there's only one room in those hotels. That's right. You try to encourage your roommate if, if she is down or not making it. You want to give her um, some encouragement and try to figure out what exactly is the problem so Wendy, that you both can make it. Wendy McPherson, a pretty good spare shooter, Leila. Uh, yes, I would say so. Mm -hmm. She's a she's a good all-around bowler. Very I have solid. not seen her get into too too much trouble since she's been out here in the past year. Spares in the opening two frames for Wendy McPherson. And, uh, Betty Morris opened up with an eight-pin spare. Here we'll see how short Betty is setting the ball as well. Just over the foul line, getting it to get into a ball early. And normally for Betty, what, she would project the ball if she was playing in a little bit, uh, what, maybe uh, a couple of feet out of the lane, maybe three feet? Oh, definitely. And another shot at how close, just over the foul yep. line, as you can see there. Mm -hmm. And you have to do that on a long oil condition. Let me ask you this, too. Would Betty move back on the approach with her feet, Leila, to give herself even that much more room to get to the head pin or no? Well, Denny, that is one way to correct, and I believe Betty does do that. Um, I have a tendency to move my eyes closer. That helps me set the ball shorter. Uh, a lot of the pros do little different things, but those are two excellent ways to get you to set the ball shorter. In other words, rather than spotting the ball at the at the, at the arrows, you would move it back to the dots, perhaps, to, to force yourself to set it a little shorter? Exactly, exactly. And conversely, exactly the opposite. If you're trying to project the ball, you might look past the arrows to, to 18 or 20 feet down the lane, pick a little spot out there to get you to project the ball through it. That's right. If the lanes are extremely dry and you need to get the ball to go very long, I like to look past the arrows. Well, contrasting styles and varied positions, ball angles, that's what makes bowling such an interesting sport. Oh, my goodness, pin spinning around like a whirling dervish, but the seven pin stands tall. We're going to see a big difference on how the next bowler that is coming on, Karen Owensworth, sets the ball compared to these two. Completely different approach. 
completely. She gets the ball way out on the lane as compared to the two that are setting it short. And it plays up and in a little bit more than these, these two players like to arc it a little bit. It's amazing how many different ways there are to throw a bowling ball and to roll a bowling ball. And if you're accurate and if you're consistent and if you repeat, you know, that's the whole key to the game. So it makes it funny. There's so many different ways to approach things, so many different ball weights. And there guess, are ball surfaces and oh, ball yeah. weights and a lot of different variables out there that um, make you better and make you able to get into the top five. Mm -hmm. Well, equipment just seems to be playing such a vital aspect, vital part of the game now. You get the right ball with the right weights. Oh, this one's through the nose. First breakthrough. 4-7-10, and Wendy McPherson in the third frame makes a mistake, and this one could cost her dearly. Well, you'll see Wendy is also setting the ball very short. That time it looked like she definitely let up on her speed and tucked a little bit inside of her mark. So it was left of the target to begin with, you think, huh? That's right, and it caused the ball to hook a little bit sooner. The toughest thing in the world, though, is, is when you're trying to slow your speed down, not to accelerate and project through the mark, isn't it? You almost decelerate that arm swing, and when you do that, you have a tendency to pull the ball a little bit. That's right. Once you get comfortable and you get your adrenaline going, you want to throw those strikes, uh, you do what's natural. And if it's not setting the ball short, and that's not what you're going to do. Mm -hmm. Betty Morris now leads by 13. It's the second time in as many matches that she's been on the bench and took the lead while the other players opened up. Tremendous psychological advantage in that, believe me. Wendy trying to bounce back. A little high. Come on, seven pin. Four pin kicked out, but the seven stands on the left-hand lane. Both players doing a little fishing at this point, and uh, neither of them able to hit the pocket consistently enough to throw a double. As a matter of fact, we haven't seen a strike here in the semifinal game. Well, Wendy's looking very tentative out there. She usually comes through the ball very strong. And here she's looking like she's trying to fit the ball into the pocket. Wendy McPherson coached by one of the best, Sam Baca. Not only a terrific lame man, but also an excellent bowler in his own right. And if she could, she'd probably get Sam on the phone.